Tollywood's back with another three hour epic two part spanning film called Solar. Part one, ceasefire. I checked it out because I really enjoyed Triple R on Netflix last year. This looked to be in the same vein. A lot of action, a lot of cool effects, a lot of beautiful cinematography. Let's talk about it in a spoiler free fashion for a little while. Before I dive in, I would appreciate it if you could slow-mo speed up punch the subscribe button because I post tons of movie reviews, roasts, live streams every single week on all sorts of different movies here. I try to cover a little bit of everything. With that being said, let's dive into the spoiler-free review. I will not be able to remember crap about the names or locations. I will give you very top-level breakdowns of what's going on and what to expect in the movie because there's a lot going on here. In fact, this movie reminds me of an Indian version of Game of Thrones with a lot of different houses and tribes really trying to get their hands on that throne and to uh, attain power for their specific set of people. And that's really the central idea behind this film because what has happened is over the course of a thousand years or so, different tribes have come and gone and have fought for power in this one region and it has kind of become its own thing. This specific, I don't even know what it's called, it's not a country, territory, I suppose? This one territory has a bunch of smaller territories within it, and the king and the lords and the uh, governors all control everything going on here, what they say goes. And so even though this nation is self-contained, there's a giant wall around it keeping out their enemies, they still touch everything across the globe. They make the decisions. They put the prices on drugs and guns and gambling. It all goes back there. And I forgot the name of the place. <laughs> this Game of Thrones story going on is just one of several different things at play. This is just kind of the overarching plot that's going to be happening. We are focused, though, on two main protagonists. One of them is the prince of the king currently in power, and the other is his best friend Diva, his protector, his right-hand guy. If he calls upon Diva, he will come. Another name for him is Salar. Salar means uh, loyal, no questions asked, will always be there when you need to call on this person. This individual will always be by your side no matter what. And as this movie plays out over the three-hour runtime, we will see that very much rings true. What I really like about this movie, for starters, is it looks slick as hell. Kind of like Triple R. Very cool effects going on. Very pretty looking people. I mean, my God, so, some of the, the females in this are absolute smoke shows. The guys are easy on the eyes, too, if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, ridiculously uh, ripped. Tons of action. And that's going to be both a pro and a con for me. Because some of this action is just so over-the-top cheesy in the best way possible, but also the worst. So I gave Zack Snyder a lot of crap in Rebel Moon because he is absolutely out of his mind with the slow-mo speed-ups. Holy crap, take a look at this movie and Zack Snyder would be, yeah, that's, that's a tad too much. You, you maybe took this too far, I would pull back. Especially in the first half of the film. Those slow motion speed up shots are constant. It's annoying and it actually detracted from the action going on and some of the spectacle and the weight of the performance. When everything is at 100, nothing's really at 100. That's the biggest gripe I have is that first section of the movie. And by first section, I mean like 45 minutes. There is a full 45 minute prelude. This story, this narrative will obviously get concluded in part two, but for right now, we focus a dumb amount of time on a lot of stuff that doesn't seem to have a lot of importance, such as this young woman becoming a teacher and trying to fit into the community, and this really, really tedious build to our lead protagonist. It just takes forever for the reveal. Now, the second half, I should really say the, the last two thirds, they freaking go. Once we get into the lore and all the different building of this world and these communities, it's on fire. This thing is moving. I'm loving it. I didn't feel the pace at all being a problem. It's just I wish they would have pulled back like 
a half hour on that intro because I do think it's going to put people off. I was actually worried about this movie watching that first act thinking, oh my God, if this is what we're doing, I'm just really not that interested. It's not, it's not really having that much fun. It's not doing anything very creatively different than some of the other Indian movies I've seen recently. It's just kind of paint by numbers. But once they get into the Game of Thrones-esque stuff, oh man, it's, it's really good. And I dug it, and I'm actually very excited for the second part whenever that hits. Outside of some janky-ass slow motion, the fighting and the action's great in the second half. There is a specific scene, a particular scene, where there's a bunch of young women, well, it's actually women of all ages, but it's a disgusting act taking place at this village where one of these lords will go here every single day and select some of his prey, and then he has his way with the woman and then kills him. Wash, rinse, repeat. The hen house, they call it, and it's, it's just a, it's an ugly situation. One that's going to lead to one of the most epic moments in the film, an awesome action sequence, full of spectacle, full of some really creative fighting, and I love how they incorporated the music into this one. With Triple R, you would kind of just jump into these silly dance numbers, which were fun, but they kind of come out of nowhere. In this movie, I felt like they really baked them in more. Like a teacher will tell a kid to start singing a song that she remembers him knowing, and this would kind of transition through our two-minute music video montage, which there are a lot of. It feels like you're watching a trailer constantly, and I dig that. That's cool. Again, it, it gets a little hard at times when it's constantly happening, but for the most part it worked. And in this specific scene I'm talking about, these women, I guess of all ages, start singing this awesome song while the fighting's taking place. They're stomping their feet, it's ratcheting up to a thousand, and I'm in. I'm loving this moment. Easily the highlight for me. But the movie's filled with some of these cool events, whether it's uh, a high-speed chase down a road, or a fight against some zombie dudes that have been given a bunch of drugs and set free, to just looking at all the different factions beefing up their security and their attack. Overall, this is a win for me. I wouldn't say it's like a top 10 of the year by any means, just because of the inconsistencies early on. I do think there is a, a much better movie here if they would have tightened things up pulled back on the excessive slow motion that's just riddling this film. It's over the top. I, I, I just couldn't do it. And I love that shit normally. And you have yourself a really good flick. Performance-wise, I dug the characters. I really like the leads. The, the relationship between our, uh, our two protagonists is fantastic. Some of the villains are quirky. They can be a little much at times, but uh, it works. It works with the playground that we're in right now. Uh, I don't really have any other hangups. Solid music, solid cinematography. Yes, it can be video game-esque. It's what you expect from this type of movie. Runtime is a problem, of course. Anytime you hit three hours, you really have to have some really good momentum. If they would have shaved it off early, we would have had a really, really good movie. Instead, it's just a fun time. It's just a fun time. All right, let me know. Did you see this movie? You have thoughts on it? Put it in the comments below. Are you not into the Tollywood, Bollywood, Indian style affairs? I understand. It's not going to be for everyone. It hits me for the most part. There are things that I, I you know, I wish, like, again, I, I say this all the time, but, but speed things up a little bit more if you don't have that much to say. Let me know. Like the video, please. I would encourage you to subscribe one more time. I post tons of movie reviews all the time in this channel. Would love to have you stick around. You can also become a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. I always say a Patreon. It's a patron at Patreon. It's such a stupid naming convention. Or right here via the YouTube join. If you just want to do a one-time thank you, there's a super thanks button under the video as well. So a lot of options. All right. Hopefully I see you next time. Take care.